that's Tammy with Collar Valley Cooks and Real Southern Woman. Today um, we are in the middle of our Understanding the Bible lesson uh, book. This is a Bible study and we are about to start the section called Ten Great Doctrines of the Bible. And um, Sorry, that was my brother texting. Um, the overview of the Bible doctrine, doctrine um, and that is the 10 great doctrines of the Bible. I'm just going to kind of touch the base on these this morning. Um, we have the Bible, God, Christ, Holy Spirit, angels, man, sin, salvation, church, and future things. Now, you don't have to write all that down if you're taking notes, because today we're just going to go over the first one, which is the Bible. And um, it says the Bible is symbolized by a book. It deals with the origin and nature of the scriptures. We're going to learn how do we get them, and are they reliable, and are they the Word of God? Okay, those are the questions that people have. The Bible is the foundation for what we learn about um, the other nine subjects in the doctrine. So it is the subject that we'll go to first. So he puts them in an order, uh, and the, this is the order. I will tell you this because this is pretty, pretty neat, and that is the Bible is the foundation, so it's first. Um, God is the first member of the Trinity. Then we have Christ, which is the second member of the Trinity. Then we have the Holy Spirit, which is the third member of the Trinity. Then we have angels, and it says the angels, angels are lower than God, but higher than man. So they are placed between God and man. Then we have man, which is made in the image of God. We have sin, which is man's shortcomings in God's eyes. We have salvation, which is offered by God through faith, to man through faith. We have the church, which proclaims the message of salvation. And then we have future things, which are a prophetic record of things that will happen in the future. So today we're just going to talk about the doctrine of the Bible. I hope y'all are having a good morning. We got Linda, we got Sandra. My brother called me this morning and woke me up. We got Sherry and Donna. Good morning, all of you girls. Um, my brother called me this morning. It was uh, 7.45, and I was still asleep, sound asleep. And he goes, um, I said, oh, my goodness, Eddie, none of us are up. I got to wake up the kids. We stayed up late last night. I stayed up late watching that TV show that I really, really love. And then... Um, I read in in my lesson book, and then I read in the book of Acts before I went to sleep. So I stayed up too late is what I did. But let's get into the doctrine of the Bible. So I haven't even had my coffee, so I'm going to take a few sips every once in a while. I got it in this cup, so it'll stay hot regardless. It says, um, he, tells, he tells us a story like he does at the beginning of every... Um, chapter, but um, this is what he says about the Bible after he gets past the story. He just says that it presents itself, um, let's see, the Bible does not defend itself. It is written to people who accept its message and therefore spends little time convincing the readers of its authority. Authenticity, the fundamental assertion that the Bible makes concerning itself is that in spite of the human collaboration and the writing of it, the Bible is a revelation of God to man. It was written without error. It can be trusted to reveal the truth um, to us regarding God, man, life, and death. Um, now, I will say this. I was when I read when I was reading the other night. It is amazing to me, amazing to me, 
how good the reading is in the Bible, how wonderful, how powerful, how deep, how interesting it is, and yet people will not pick it up and read it. They'll read books all day long. They'll read all this other stuff. They'll read uh, like Bible studies. They'll read anything, but they won't pick up the Word and read it. It just blows my mind because if you're saved and you have the Holy Spirit living in you, it will help you discern the Scriptures, and it is so interesting. When you get in there and start reading it, it is so amazing because it's alive and it just reaches out and grabs you and it's just I love it I just love reading the Bible but let's see um, it says the four things on the four major subdivisions of the doctrine of the Bible are number one revelation that's r-e-v-e-l-a-t-i-o-n revelation it says the Bible was revealed to man by God. And that is your definition. It says God made known to man that which he wanted man to know. Um, some of the information related to present day instruction on how to live and be read, rightly related to God and once fellow man. Other information, excuse me, relates to prophetic statements about the future. Um, when, when he's telling you this, I think another thing that's interesting is God made known to man that which he wanted us to know. So, um, whenever you get, if, if you ever run into somebody that has a question that you can't seem to find a good solid answer in the Bible, don't give them, try, don't try to give them a solid answer from the Bible and, and, one that comes to mind every time is dinosaurs, okay? Don't try to give them a solid answer to the Bible. Don't try to twist the word of God into meaning what you want it to mean. The main thing is that if God wanted us to know, he would have put it in there. And he would have put it in there more than once. Things that are really important. So those things aren't important to God. The, God, the, the Bible is all about who Christ is. The Bible is about the Word, which is Christ, not about a lot of uh, frivolous things that people want to use to act like it's not true. So um, just remember in your own mind, if God wanted you to know things like that, when it pertains to spiritual things, he would have told you. So don't um, fret over the, the little things that aren't even spiritual things. Um, and let somebody get you in a tizzy, okay? And if I were you, I'd just answer them like that. You know what? If God thought dinosaurs were important, he would have put it in the Bible and he'd have put it in there more than once. And uh, so apparently he don't think they're that important, you know? So don't get stuck on subjects that he doesn't make a point to spell out at least three times and tell you what they are, Okay. So it says plainly, God made known to man that which he wanted him to know. Um, therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, when it quotes a passage from Psalms, this is, this is good right here, okay? And then he backs it up with scripture. And that is, it says that in Hebrews 3, 7, it says, therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, and then he's got dot, 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 because he doesn't finish it off. And it says, then he quotes a passage from Psalms, which was written by King David, indicating that the human writing was revealed by God. It says, and this says, therefore, just as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you hear his voice. So he's referencing a passage that backs up that the Bible was revealed as a revelation to man, okay? Then the next one is inspiration, I-N-S-P-I-R-A-T-I-O-N, inspiration. It says, God saw to it that when men wrote down his revelation, they did so without error. Then they give us a passage that says, men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. It is 2 Peter 1.21. 
2 Peter 1.21, it says, Not all of God's revelation to man was recorded in the Bible, and some of it was very personal between God and an individual, but for the part of God's revelation to man that was written down, God became involved in the recording process to a degree that while he did not dictate or override each individual's author's personality, he saw to it that the writer did record what he wanted recorded and that it was without error, okay? Then we have a subdivision called illumination. So the first one is revelation. The Bible was revealed to man by God. The second one is inspiration, which God saw to it that men wrote down his revelation. They did so without error, okay? The third one is illumination. And there's three eyes, so it gets confusing. When he tells you to fill in the blank at the end, you're like, well, which, you know. Um, the Holy Spirit must enable people to understand and embrace the truth of Scripture. Illumination. The Holy Spirit must enable people to understand and embrace the truth of Scripture. Now, Liz, I'm going to read this one because this is important, okay? I, not that they're not all important, but you know what I mean. It says, man's natural ability to grasp and embrace the information in the Bible is limited. Much of it is spiritual information that man does not readily understand or accept. To overcome this fact, the Holy Spirit gradually illuminates the receptive mind to understand and embrace more and more of the Bible as the Christian matures in his or her spiritual walk. And that's true. If I pick up... Um, the Bible today, and I read it, it's completely different than it was two years ago or last year. Um, so as you mature in your Christian faith, the Holy Spirit will, will reveal more and more information to you, okay? Um, so don't get discouraged if you pick up the Bible and read it and it doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, if it doesn't make any sense at all, then maybe... I mean, you need to make sure you're saved because really and truly when you're saved, the Holy Spirit does help you understand the book because it's a spiritual book. Um, when I met with Donna Smith and her husband, they talked to me about their testimonies and they said that they had a hard time reading the scripture until they were saved. And then once they were saved, it was like it just opened it up to them. And it made such a difference in what they could see in the Word of God. And that just goes to show that it is a spiritual book, okay? And the, the passage that they use with this one is in 1 Corinthians 2, 12. And it says, Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things freely given to us by God. It says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who God, I mean, who is from God, that we might know the things freely given to us by God. So the Holy Spirit helps us recognize the things of God, not just in the Bible, but in the world, okay? Then we have the fourth section, which is interpretation. I-N-T-E-R-P-E, no, I'm sorry. I-N-T-E-R-P-R-E-T-A-T-I-O-N, interpretation. There's some long words in here. Inspiration, illumination, interpretation. We must be diligent students of scripture to understand its, deal, its deeper teachings. That's interpretation. It says um, we must be diligent students. I believe it was students, wasn't it? Yeah, of Scripture to understand its deeper teachings. Um, it says be diligent. The, the central passage is in 2 Timothy 2, verse 15. It says be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed Handling accurately the word of truth. That's a big statement, y'all. 
Be diligent to present yourself approved to God as a workman who does not need to be ashamed, handling accurately the word of truth. I remember uh, the other day when I was talking, um, I made a remark and a lady asked me what I meant by it. And I said um, that we shouldn't depend on getting information from other sources to answer a question that we have. We should go to the word of God and not a man. And she wanted to know what I meant by that. And I said, so th this is what I'm talking about. Once you're saved and you start reading the Word of God, um, you should really turn to the Word of God first to try to find your answer before you even ask somebody else. If you can't find it in the Word of God or it, or it seems confusing to you and maybe you are a new Christian and so um, then you can go and get some help on, you know, what the Scripture means if you, if you have a hard time with the interpretation. But don't just automatically pick up the phone and call somebody. My mother was bad about that. She was a preacher's daughter and she'd always had her daddy to ask questions. And then when he passed away, she would call other pastors instead of picking up the word of God and looking for it herself. As a pastor's daughter, she should have been grounded in the word enough to be able to figure out some truths for herself. But she wasn't because she did not study the word of God. Um, Mama was not studied on the Word of God at all. Bless her heart, she really wasn't. And I think a lot of Christians are like that. I think a lot, the majority of them that go to church every Sunday, um, and they go to Sunday school, they pick up their Bible, they go on Sunday morning, and they never open up the Bible themselves. They depend on the Word from other people. And let me just say this, if you don't ever read the Scripture, you have no idea if what somebody's telling you is the truth or not. I mean, you think you do, but you really don't. You really need to read more in the scripture. And if you're there, then just start reading. It will be amazing what you can learn and what your mind will retain. And the Holy Spirit will help you remember uh, so that when you're in, in a Bible study like this and you're listening to somebody like me, you can tell if I'm speaking the truth or not, okay? Okay. Um, now, some people have disagreed with a couple of things I've said, but overall, all Christians are pretty set on these 10 basic doctrines of the Bible. Now, um, so when we go through these 10 basic doctrines, most of you should um, agree with them because they are the basic doctrines of Christianity, okay? Um, now... I'm looking to make sure I haven't forgotten. Really, that's all there is to the doctrine of the Bible. Um, there's four subdivisions. There's the um, revelation, the illumination, the, I have to go back and look, y'all, because I can't remember all these I words, the inspiration and the interpretation. Um, and for the most part, in a synopsis, the Bible's true. It's pinned down through the Holy Spirit through man, but with the power of the Holy Spirit. And there is no room for error in it. So remember that the Bible is the Word of God. Okay? That's the main thing. Um, and that we should study to show ourselves approved. Uh, that's pretty much this whole section. I went through two chapters because I didn't want to do the summary of the doctrines because then we just turn around and do the doctrine. So, um, of course, in your book, you should read it, but and I read it last night, but it's just, you know, repetitive information. So tomorrow we're going to go through the doctrine of God, but I hope that um, if you have any questions, you will look them up, or if you want further reading, you can read some of these scriptures that back up what they were telling you about the, the Bible and the Word of God. To me, the, the most important scripture is, I believe it's John 1, 1, where it says, um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God, I think is how it goes. I'm just trying to remember it off the top of my head. But what that amounts to is, in the beginning was the Word. So the Bible was there from the beginning, before he even had it pinned down through these men. It was Jesus Christ. 
and he was there in the beginning and he is the word of God. The word of God is all about Jesus Christ, the Messiah, um, and our salvation, you know, how it comes to fruition. So uh, keep that in mind. We're going to uh, say our prayers this morning, and I hope y'all have a blessed Tuesday. I really hope to get in the kitchen today. Yesterday was a wild day, and I'll go ahead and tell you, I started to come on last night and talk to y'all because I was having a very down day, I guess because Mama started off the day with me down in the dumps, and then I got to feeling guilty about her, and then I got to feeling sorry for myself, and I guess all of that just comes with having a parent that has dementia or um, Alzheimer's, um, it's just such a roller coaster. So I thought, well, I'm not going to get on here and be depressed for everybody to see because I didn't want to pull y'all down with me because that's not very encouraging. But I will say we all have our good days and our bad days. And yesterday was not an easy day for me. But today is going to be a much better day. I'm sure of it. And I plan to get in the kitchen to do something fun. I plan to get my clothes washed, do all the chores I didn't get to do yesterday, so and work on my cookbook. So um, I hope y'all have a good day. Let's say our prayers, and I hope to see y'all later today. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your word, for the word of God, the Bible, um, the first major 10 doctrines that we are learning about. We thank you for giving us your word and um, having it pinned down by man through the Holy Spirit so that we could uh, learn the things that you would have us to learn. Um, help us go throughout our day being a good example for you. Um, bless each and every one of the people that came in today for this Bible study, whether they're coming in this morning or later today. I pray that you would bless them because they um want to know more about you and your word. Um, be with us as we go throughout our day and keep us safe and um, help us stay away from temptation. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Chris had a pretty good day fishing yesterday too. Um, he caught a couple of fish, so I'll call him this morning when we get off of here and talk to him. And, um, I guess I will see y'all later. I love you. Bye. Thanks for tuning in, y'all. Bye.